um, welcome to our commissioners and our staff and employees and citizens. I will call to order the Lander County Commissioners Meeting, Town Board of Battle Mountain and Austin Board of County Highway Commissioners for November 7, 2019. Since Veterans Day is coming <coughs> around the corner and um, you have uh, your daughter in the active military, I'd like you to lead us in the Blood of Allegiance, if you would, Kathy. I present the to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And now if you'll join us in a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Lander County Commissioners may wait for lunch from 12 o'clock noon to 1.15 p.m. Any agenda item may be taken out of order, may be combined for consideration by the public body, and items may be pulled or removed from the agenda at any time. So we'll start with Commissioner's report. Um, Judy, I'll start with you. Do you have something to share with us today? Um, not really so much to share in, in the effect of it's, it was a, a conference, but I did attend the Fire West show in Reno last week um, through Lepsi and attended a couple different classes on IC training, hazmat, um, very, very in interesting and lots of different classes that I wish I would have had more time to attend. They had a um, exhibit, uh, vendors exhibits. And it was just fascinating, some of the, the new trucks, equipment for fire trucks, um, first responders, ambulances, you know, anything to do with that. It, it just, lots of really, really neat stuff. So it was really enjoyable. Um, like I said, it, it's not something I can present as far as what the classes were, but I would just recommend if anybody had the chance for something like that. It was great. Thank you. Um, hospital board was last night. Um, the one thing, uh, most of it's just um, month to month stuff of the paying of the bills and those kind of things. But um, one thing that the hospital is doing is getting into community service. And a bunch of their employees went to the duck pond and cleaned up all of those um, Russian olive trees and stuff along the road. <laughs> yeah, around the pond. So the path is there again. So people who want to um, try walking without getting attacked by geese. Um, on the, the path is back, um, but yeah, they spent um, a whole day and took I don't countless loads to the dump of the um, debris that was around there and picked up garbage. So they're trying to really focus um, once a month on doing things for the community. So that was very notable and looked very nice when they were finished. So um, yeah, and all done by volunteers from the hospital. So thank you. That's all I have. Brian. That's a new report. Okay. All right. No, no meetings. Okay, I do have a couple, couple quick things here. Um, the Austin Chamber of Commerce had their annual meeting and also um, their uh, regular meeting last weekend and Monday. Um, they did revise their bylaws and uh, their new president um, is the continuing president, Robin Beach. On November 4th, I did attend the special meeting with the Kingston Town Board, and that, of course, is on our agenda. Um, on November 6th, gee, that was yesterday, I came up for Lita, but we ended up with no quorum. We thought we were going to have, but we couldn't, couldn't connect. The last two that were going to come in by phone didn't, and so we have so much to do. Um, it, it's a very thick packet, but we need to decide if we're going ahead with some of these programs, so I'm hoping... The December one will be okay. 
and we'll do a quorum. We're still short two people, one from Battle Mountain and one from our southern area. And I think maybe what it's going to take for some of these volunteer positions is some personal one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, it's one thing to read in the paper that, oh, they need somebody on that board. It's something else when someone says to them personally, you would be a very valuable member. Would you consider doing that? And it's a personal invitation where you might be able to fill some boards. So let's kind of take that on and pass it around and see what we can do because we definitely need them. Um, I also had a justice and public safety uh, telephone call. That's my national committee that I sit on. And a couple things I wanted to share with you on that. That was yesterday. Um, they actually are redoing um, the reform bill for the flood insurance. And that is with the House. Right now it's with the Financial Services Committee in the House. And NACO has realized that there really isn't anything regarding the rates and the affordability of it. And so they've really been working hard with, with the Financial Services Committee to put that in so that they can put a cap on what some of these prices would be with the flood insurance. And they were very positive. They said um, even if they can't do it through the House committee, they are sure that the Senate will will do that. So that was one of them on the flood insurance because it doesn't do any good to be able to have it if you can't afford it. So the rates are extremely important and they're on top of that. The other one was one we've been talking about for some time and that's regarding our inmates that are all in pretrial. And we've mentioned it before that we've been working very diligently, NACO and our legislatures, to actually change that where they don't lose their insurance when they go in. Because Medicare stops, Medicaid stops, veterans stops, everything, and the county takes care of all these people, and they haven't even been tried yet, and they've lost coverage, and it's up to us. Well, the good news is we have two bills, actually, in the Senate that are both addressing that. Um, they're both from, um, from senators that are in the East, but one of them, it's Senate Bill 2628, and that one will, will reestablish the Medicaid so they don't lose Medicaid. But there's another one, a companion bill, that Senate Bill um, uh, 2628 that they're working on uh, from another senator that actually says that will restore benefits on Medicare and VA and CHIP and all the rest of them. So it's the first time we've had any bills that are there. So if any of you get a chance to talk to our legislatures, and we do have Senator Rosen coming through next Thursday in Battle Mountain, and she'll be in Austin on Tuesday. So we need to, to get them on board to say, when this comes up, this is really important to support. Um, actually, uh, Senator Rosen is doing um, her, her tour of 50 and then back on 80 uh, because of Veterans Day and Veterans Week. So she's really kind of highlighting that part of it. Um, also, speaking of highlighting, um, they are highlighting the Austin School on November 18th, and we are uh, celebrating the ribbon cutting of our fiber optic. So this is extremely <coughs> important. The state superintendent of schools will be there. Of course, our superintendent will be there, and um, they're all invited down because it, it is kind of an unprecedented event for us in Austin anyway, and then we'll be having the library with the fiber optic right behind it. We're also looking at the fiber optic, because um, I said when they came in, they're doing not just a few fiber optic things, but the, they're doing like, what did Jojo tell us, 47 to 97 that they would be putting in so that a private contractor could come in and, and really give, get us online for for um, the broadband in the lower area, so we'll see how that goes. Um, the only other thing I wanted to say was um, uh, to wish you all a happy Veterans Day. Um, for those of you who have served, of course, we are extremely grateful. And um, regardless of whether you served or not, we're, we're all connected. We all either have ancestors that have, or we have loved ones in the service, or or we have friends that, that have served or are in the service, 
and this goes back to what 1918 World War One actually would be um, Monday. So um, that's kind of an exciting time. So hope that's a beautiful day for you all. And with that, I will go into our executive director. They attended a uh, HR conference for, for leadership uh, with Coolpack in Reno. I also attended uh, one day of the uh, fire show in Reno where we discussed, I met with some vendors to discuss equipment related to our new Austin fire truck that is here and outfitting, will be outfitting it shortly. Um, I'm happy to report that we did get the wind machine for the Battle Mountain Airport. It's being set up now. Hopefully that will give the FAA the uh, data they need in order to keep runway 1230 across one runway open. Um, our auditors were here all last week. They will be coming to give us a report uh, sometime either the end of November or the 1st of December. Something I'd like the commissioners to think about is our golf course. What we want, what you would like to do with that? Are we going to go out to advertise, or are we going to look at uh, hiring a pro? I've had two different inquiries into it, so I want to see uh, which way to go. So I'll have that on the next agenda. Um, I do have some things that I need to discuss uh, in a closed in a litigation um, related to the Army Corps and our bill with the Army Corps of Engineers, and also um, some water issues that are in litigation in the South. Um, you want to do that after the meeting? Yeah, that would be fine. Please. I think that's it. That's it? Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, we're now open for public comment for non-agendized items only. Persons are invited to submit comments in writing and or attend to make comments on any non-agenda item on the board meeting, if any, and discussion of those comments at the discretion of the board. All public comment may be limited to three minutes per person, again, at the discretion of the board. Reasonable restrictions may be placed on public comments based upon time, place, and manner, but public comment based upon viewpoint may not be restricted. Any public comment this morning? Okay, hearing that, we'll move to the consent agenda. All matters listed under the consent agenda are considered routine and may be acted upon by the Board of County Commissioners with one action, without extensive discussion. Any member of the board or any citizen may request that an item be taken from the consent agenda, discussed and acted upon separately during the meeting. Consent agenda materials are available at the Lander County Clerk's Office for viewing and copies are available for a nominal charge. Number one, approval of November 7, 2019 agenda notice. Number two, approval of May 23, 2019 meeting minutes. Number three, approval of June 27, 2019 meeting minutes. Number four, approval of July 11, 2019 meeting minutes. Number five, approval of July 25, 2019 meeting minutes. Number six, approval of August 8, 2019 meeting minutes. Number seven, approval of September 19, 2019 meeting minutes. Number eight, approval of October 10, 2019 meeting minutes. Number nine, approval of October 24, 2019 meeting minutes. And number 10, approval of the payment of bills. Okay, we do not have minutes for two, three, four, and five. So for the approval of the consent agenda, we would do number one, the agenda notice, uh, number six and seven, August 8th, September 19th minutes. And we're going to pull out number 10, approval of the payment of bills. So we have one, six and seven for the approval of the consent agenda. I'll make that motion. Second. Thank you. Judy made the motion. Kathy seconded. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, for the um, approval of payment of bills, we have a few checks that we are pulling out. Um, we have check number 205410, and that is for um, Bobby Brooks, right? Yes. Kathy has that one. I'm pulling out check number 205420 for my travel expenses. 
Check number 205-336 and 205-408 is for Judy. We'll pull those two. And Brian, 205-349 and 205-423 for his employer point S. So pull it and we'll pull that. Anything else? 205-338. 205338, that's the one to our executive director? Yes. And pull that one out for discussion. Okay. So if I can have a motion to approve the rest of the bills. I'll make a motion to approve the rest of the bills. Second. Thank you. Kathy made the motion. Brian seconded. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Okay, so the first one we're pulling out is 205338. For Keith, and that's for travel expenses, and you wanted to discuss that? Judy? Yes, I did. Um, so, one of one of the jet, or one of the, the bills was for the meal reimbursement for the NACO conference. Mm -hmm. um, you've got that list as October seventeenth and the eighteenth. If that's what it says, yeah. And what conference was that? That was the. Oh, that was the HR, cool packed HR conference, October 17th and 18th. Yeah, okay, so you've got it listed as NACO. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, it's, it was pool packed. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was the pool packed HR conference. I'll make that correction. With, okay, uh, so then the other question I've got um, is you did mention that you went to the fire show. You yeah. went one day? I went one day, yes. Monday, I went Monday. And I, did, and I met with uh, L.N. Curtis to discuss equipment for the Austin fire truck that we just got. Okay, where was L.N. Curtis? At the conference. At, I mean, was he, the vendors weren't set up yet. I, I know, he went there Sunday to meet with me Monday. Okay. And I met with Rod Lloyd of L.N. Curtis at the conference to discuss the equipment for the fire truck that we just got two weeks ago. For Austin. And you stayed overnight? I did, because he I needed to sit and talk with him and come up with an equipment list for the fire truck. Okay. Okay, so we need approval on check number 205338. I'll make a motion, sir. I'll second. Can I make a motion? Thank you. And Kathy seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that passes. Thank you. Uh, the next check is actually to um, Bobby Brooks, and that's check number 205410. Need a motion? Well, it's not to him, it's for training for him. I'm sorry? It's for training for him, it's not a, oh. to him. Oh. It's to the Latter County EMS for, for training. Him. Thank you. I'll make okay. a motion to approve. Okay, Brian made the motion. I'll second. Thank you, Judy. Second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Thank you. Uh, the next check is to me. It's check number 205420 for travel. I'll make a motion to approve that. Second. Thank you. Judy made the motion. Kathy seconded it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And I will abstain. Thank you. The next checks are to Judy. 205336, 205408. Motion to approve. Second. Brian made the motion and Kathy seconded it. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll abstain. <coughs> and Judy abstains. Thank you. The next one is to Brian's employer and it's check number 205349, 205423. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Thank you. Kathy made the motion. Second. Thank you, Judy seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. I abstain. Thank you. Okay, that takes care of our approval of the payment of bills. So we move to number one, assessor, for possible action, the request to approve or disapprove the renewal of the modified contract with Quest Technology Management for a managed telephone system for the Lander County Courthouse. Well, I, I don't see the assessor here. This is just a renewal um, that her and the undersheriff have been working on, for that, which is number two, so I don't want to get ahead of myself, but um, for our telephone system here in the courthouse for the maintenance of it, uh, the, the uh, contract's been reviewed by the district attorney's office, and Laura is 
completely, or, or maybe, did you want to speak on that, Bob? It's been yeah. slightly modified, too. It puts, it puts us in a smaller group of people so that we can get better service. I mean, we were in a large group of people and weren't getting one-on-one -on -one service. So okay, but the system stays the same. Yes. It's a renewal and a slight modification. That's why it says modification. But the modification is to put, her in, put us in a small, smaller subgroup. Okay. So, and, and uh, the undersheriff and, and Laura, they uh, are both very happy with the modification. Um, I see that this doesn't come up until March. So we, we're not put in any smaller group until next March? I, I don't know when. Don't. Larry seems to think that it's working really well right now. So right. Right. Okay. So I think they already put us there, and that will make and it. And the cost is where we're we, also. We we can't hear you. We need your name, and you need to come up. I'm sorry. I know I'm going to do that to you. <laughs> Donna Steinmetz, <laughs> Donna Steinmetz. Um, I'm here to represent um, the assessor. Um, she seemed to think that it is best, exactly what Ted said, it's a smaller group, get better service, and so far it's working real well, so I guess that's where it is. I don't know a whole lot about it. And the cost is less. Right. Right? Yeah. So we're on it already, Donna? Yes. I, I believe so. Okay. But the contract doesn't renew until March, right. and it renews until 2023. Right. right. When we're put into the smaller group, but when the when the uh, contract renews, they're going to keep us in that group. Okay, but we're happy with all of that. Yes. Is oh, what yes. we're saying. Okay. Yes. Very happy. Okay. I also noticed there was a prepayment um, discount in there. Do we do that type of thing? For the discount, we have done it in the past. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Do you have any questions? Oh, and then they're just, you know, of course, the chairman has to sign. She has to send it back to them, and then they'll send it back. So, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the renewal of the modified contract with Quest Technology Management. Second. And authorize. And authorize the chair to sign. Thank you. Judy made the motion. Can't be seconded that. Any oh, other? <coughs> wait a minute. Yeah, sorry. <coughs> Any other discussion? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll correct that to say for the courthouse because we do have it on the next item. So, okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Moving to number two. For possible action, the request to approve or disapprove the renewal of the modified contract with Quest Technology Management for a managed telephone system for the Lander County Sheriff's Office. And again, this is for the same contract time. Um, do they have any changes in theirs? The same changes. Do they also, we could save a little bit of money. Yes. And, okay. Great. I'll make a motion to approve the renewal of the modified contract with Quest Technology Management for the Lander County Sheriff's Office. Also, and okay. authorize the chair to sign. Thank you. Judy made the motion. Kathy seconded. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Number three. Battle Mountain Chamber of Commerce for possible action to approve or disapprove the Battle Mountain Chamber of Commerce Parade of Lights to be held on December 7, 2019, which route includes starting at 6 p.m. at Royal Inn, 521 East Front Street, turning left on Broad Street, passing through the Battle Mountain Civic Center, turning right on Palmer Street, then right onto Humboldt Street, passing through the Battle Mountain General Hospital main entrance onto 6th Street, and will be ending at the 6th Civic Center 625 South Broad Street. The Commission must approve, disapprove the signing of the agency's checkoff and notification lift for temporary right-of-way occupancy permit application. 
submitted to the Nevada Department of Transportation and to approve or disapprove the parade of lights to proceed on Lando County roads as outlined above and all other matters properly related there too. Nisha, hello. Good morning. Felicia Ochoa for the record. Um, yes, I'm just looking for approval. I submitted um, the signed documents from the Highway Patrol along with the Sheriff's Department as well. And so we're just looking for approval. Do you need, <clears throat> excuse me, do you need a uh, commissioner to sign also? When I got the documents from, that has, that showed the checkoff points or the, the temporary right of way, I had a section for um, the commissioner, so I'm assuming yes. Okay. I'll make a motion. Oh, can we have a question? Oh, sorry. Sorry. I'm no. going to speak up faster. Okay. I don't know if anybody had spoken to you yet because I've been trying to catch up, but I know that you had some issues with your dogs, and I'm sorry, very sorry yeah. for that. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, about going to the park. To, yeah. And so, so, what do we do about that? If that's something to be, do we have to come back and have that little bit of road changed? Or no, what do we I do? is what we're thinking is because we're attempting to do, which is still kind of in the works, to do a lighting of um, the trees in Oak Coast Park, which is a whole nother separate project. Um, but is what we were thinking originally was to have the parade um, veered towards the Oak Coast Park. But then, really thinking about it, it kind of wouldn't make sense to have all of those big floats go right there by the high school. And have to go through the residential areas so we're going to keep the route as is ending at the civic center and just have our santa which is always the end of the parade um just have our santa make their way to okay. their tree of light or okay. to the lighting of the christmas tree so that we don't have all that congestion, congestion. Mm -hmm. okay very good i'm sorry no that's okay um i'll make a motion to approve the battle mountain chamber of commerce parade lights with the route indicated and authorize the chair to sign the agency checkoff and notification list for temporary right away occupancy permit application. I'll second. Thank you. Judy made the motion and Kathy seconded that. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you, Felicia. <laughs> Can't believe it's. Christmas already, but they just put the big snow poles up on Highway 50 <laughs> coming in. And then, of course, Sirius XM is on their full holiday tradition music, so it's like, here it is. <laughs> Number four. Commissioners, for possible action whether to opt out of or stay with the current opioid federal lawsuit. Um, this was brought to our attention by NAPO that uh, the federal government um, has, uh, well, they have, actually not the federal government, but um, that uh, the folks that have done this did a class action suit. And so we are automatically included in that for all counties. And so we either have to take action to opt out of that or no decision means we're in it. So we need to discuss this. Um, actually, the information in your packet shows that on a county level, they have a per capita value of what, uh, if they are successful, what the county would receive. It's 293 a person, and it comes out to $17,357 that Lander County would receive if we took no action and stayed in the class action lawsuit. I mean, the only reason really to stay in would be to make a statement, right? I mean, what are the other pros of saying? Well, if we, if we opt out, um, the state also has filed class action, um, well, not a class action suit. I don't think there's this class action, is it? I don't know if it's a class I don't know either, but it does include lawsuit. everyone in the state, so it would include us. Um, so if they receive something, we would automatically receive something, which probably still would be higher than the 17000 You can't be in both lawsuits. That's the bottom. Yeah, line. right. And we we're we're on a time up. frame to opt out, right. so we need to opt out by November this month, the twenty second of this month. Yeah. And should we? Uh, I mean, is it advisable that we stay with the state to go with the state lawsuit? Okay. <laughs> it's it's what I. They both should be successful, but you never know. Mm -hmm. lawsuit. You just don't know. 
Okay, so we have a motion. <coughs> to opt out? Well, I'll make a motion that we opt out of the federal lawsuit. The opioid lawsuit. Second. Possibly join the state. Well, if we opt out, we're automatically with the state, correct? Okay. We're with the state. Okay, then so we yeah, can so proceed I'll with the state. If, right. if we don't opt out, we can't be included in state one B. Right. We've already received benefit from the federal. Oh. That's my understanding. So for clear, um, I'll uh, make a motion that we opt out of the um, current um, of the old federal lawsuit. Right. I'll second. Thank you, Kath. We made the motion to opt out, and uh, Brian seconded that. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Any opposed? Okay. Number five, update on the progress, future plans, and budgeted money from the committee on the old courthouse. They're unable to make it today, but I did want to bring some numbers forth um, to the, to the uh, commission. In um, 2016, they they paid they paid um, thirty eight or I'm sorry the county paid. Keith, can I get you to speak up a little bit? Uh, Austin has a real tough time. You speak so so softly. <clears throat> okay. Thank you. Just yes. throw your voice. All right. Um, I wanted to, they are unable to make it today, so they're going to try to come to a meeting. I believe it was set for December. They're going to come. December twenty first. They're going to come to the meeting in December, to actually give a full update. But I wanted to bring forth, in 2016, Lander County paid for a study to be done. It was $38,000. In 17, they were granted a $50,000 grant. And to my knowledge, I don't know, they have not spent any of that money. So that's what his or her report will contain, is that. I don't know what their future plans are. Um, but I wanted to get those numbers out. I believe uh, Commissioner Clark did have some questions on, on the past numbers, so I wanted to get those out to you. Yeah. Where'd they get the $38,000 for the 2016 study? They came to the commissioners, and they asked if they could do a study and if the commission would pay for it. So it did come out of, that was before they got the grant. So and then we gave them 50. Yes. I thought we gave them 50 and 50. 15, 38. Yeah. 38 and then 50. The 38 was for the for the study that they did. And then the 50,000 was in the following year that was given in a grant. So is the study complete? Are we aware of that? Yes, and it is. Do we have, or has, can we get a copy of that? Sure. To see what that yeah. entailed, please? Thank you. For our backup for the agenda item? Yes. So since 17, they haven't done anything. I, I don't. I do okay. not, I'm not aware of them doing anything. Because okay. this was this was my committee. I put this together to save, to give people a chance to volunteer and save that building, and it just seems like it's kind of dwindled. And uh, you know, we need to follow up on this and see if they're going to follow through or put a fence around it until we find people that are going to do it. Do something here. I, I don't know what they what what or if they've done anything, but they did get a fifty thousand dollar grant in two thousand and seventeen. Okay. But they are going to be here in December. Yes, Great. they were unable to make it today, but like I said, I left it on so that I could pass on some of these numbers that were questioned in the last uh, commission. Thank you. Moving on to number six, our fiscal officer update for the current fiscal year two thousand nineteen financials. Presence is requested, Cindy. Good morning. Good morning. Cindy Benson for the record. I just have a little update. Um, on our accounts receivables for the first quarter for fiscal year 1920, our water and sewer was 423169 Water and sewer miscellaneous, $11,870.80. Landfill thirty three thousand nine fifty eight ninety four, and that gives us a total of our accounts receivable at four hundred sixty eight thousand nine hundred ninety eight ninety. 
<coughs> the quarterly fund balance report for the first quarter fiscal year 1920 is as follows. The total revenue revenue for the first quarter is $3,209,816, which is down 7.21% compared to last year's first quarter. The total expenses for the first quarter in is $7,678,458, which is up by 13.29% compared to last year's first quarter. We also received a few more grants for the fiscal year 1819 Battle Mountain Airport, one for $24,346.94, one for $5,944.89, and one for $66,773.98 for a total of $97,065.81. And we also received one more grant for fiscal year 1819 for the Austin Airport in the amount of $53,904.42. And that's all I have. Thank you. Cindy? Yes. <laughs> you don't get escape that easily. Um, so do you have any idea, you know, what, it doesn't seem like much, 7.21%, but why our, our revenues are down? In the first quarter is mostly, um, it could be just timing on when they're actually posted into the system. Okay. Um, without, you know, remembering what happened last year, I mean, is it typical is this normal that our revenues are, are down like that? Yeah, in the first quarter. Okay, okay. And then basically the same thing for uh, expenses being up? Yeah. Okay. Great, thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Cindy. Thanks. Number seven, our Genta Justice Court. For possible action to create and fund a full-time bailiff position within the Argenta Justice Court. This position will be an hourly position with overtime and benefits. Good morning. Good morning. Denise Fortune, Argenta Justice Court, Justice of the Peace for the record. Tony Baker. And I believe you guys received my information with my research. And I'm here to ask for money. That's why I'm here, <laughs> ask for money. Um, I realize it is in between the fiscal year, which is uh, why I gave you guys a heads up that I was coming, and I hate to do that to you guys. Um, I was planning on putting it in my next budget and then coming before you then, but we had some laws change that made my intentions needed now. So. Bottom line is our Jenna Justice Court needs a bailiff. I don't have the money for a bailiff, and that's why I'm here. Thank you. Um, I did read in some of it, though, that um, uh, there was some extra money with the district court that was willing to fund a little bit of something, right? I believe that's our jury trials. District right. court, yeah, um, the law changed that justice courts who don't do jury trials now have to do jury trials on domestic violence cases, and not on all of them, just if they're requested by the defendant and the attorney. Um, district court, thank goodness, has the money, at least for now. I mean, I'm sure next budget I'll be coming before you guys again saying, hey, now I need a line for jury trials. But for now, Judge Shirley has enough in there, has a jury commissioner, has met with myself and my criminal clerk a couple times, we're trying to get that. All justice court judges are scrambling right now because we've never done jury trials. We don't know how to ju do jury trials, and we don't have the money for jury trials. And that will help with the expense of the summons and things like that. Summons, to pay the jurors, all of that. I have to have a bailiff in there, um, and Judge Shirley, thank goodness for him right now, has the money to cover us at least for the next six months in between the budget. So I'm good on that. My problem is a bailiff. Yes. And I have um, had several meetings with Ron and Robert, who have been very good to me. Um, they'll cover when they can. Unfortunately, they're short-staffed also. 
and uh, district court takes precedence over my court. If they are short-staffed, district court has scheduled court every other Tuesday. Judge Shirley also comes over on Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays. I have court Monday through Friday, not scheduled court, but I have scheduled court Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, some Thursdays, some Fridays. Um, my clerks and myself have, meet, have felt for a while and have had a couple instances come up in the last few months. We need a bailiff in our courtroom when we are having court. We need that, not only for our protection, but for the community's protection, for everybody's protection. I, I think the commission is, um, is, is certainly uh, uh, feeling what, you, what you're asking for, and uh, I thought your report was very thorough. Thank you, Judge. I do have a question, though. Um, on the Austin, have you uh, been in touch with our judge in Austin? And I know they won't hold as many, but if something should happen that they would have a trial, in the Austin court, would your bailiff be available? That is something to be looked at. Billy, I'm sorry, Mr. Uh, Gandolfo and I have not discussed that. This is an Argenta Justice Court position, not a county position, not to cover both counties. I want this to be Argenta Justice Court is going to be their top priority. No, I, I understand that, but I also wanted to throw out the fact that if we did have something like that, perhaps the bailiff might be able to, depending on your court schedules, but I mean, they don't have that many, um, but things could come yes, up with a few. Absolutely. And, he's um, gonna be he's going to be in the same boat, yes. Yeah. And if I don't need him, and he does need him, and the county has a way to transport him, or her, whoever, um, up there to do court, if, they, if he feels that he needs court, that's something that can definitely be addressed. I, I did think of that. It's not in here because it's not my place to say, right. Billy, you know, here's a bailiff you might be able to share, you know. And, uh, you know, that will be up to him to come before you guys with his needs, no, not, I not my place. I wanted to throw place. it out while we were discussing right. it to right. see if it's a possibility that it might work out. The other question I have is under the, the new law of the risk assessment research yes and the expense with that yes and you mentioned that a couple times in here do you see the bailiff actually doing some of that research yes. for you yes yes and being my risk assessment officer um, I have two employees Tony is one of them I have another employee there's some paperwork that has to be done on these arrests and Monday through Friday um, the girls in the office can do some of the paperwork what the girls can't do, and they can do the, the criminal background checks, which will help with getting the, this risk assessment form done. The problem is, is if I OR somebody, because they fall under that guideline, and I OR somebody, there has to be a way for me to send somebody to go test them, to make sure that they're not drinking, to make sure that they're at work, to make sure that they're doing the conditions of their pre-trial release, well, I'm not about to send my girls knocking on somebody's door wherever and say, here, you know, breathe or give me some urine or, you know it's, what I it's mean. An expense, so, yeah, it's an added expense and, and a surprise to all of the courts. It is, yes. And we knew we it was coming that. and we've known that it is, it is coming. And I did, Tony and I had a meeting with Judge Shirley um, Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning, mm -hmm. and he did ask, um, will my bailiff, and pre-risk assessment person also be at his disposal if he calls me and says, hey, I've got John Smith out <coughs> on a pre-trial risk assessment. Can your bailiff go test them for me? And we did uh, confirm with him that yes, unless we're in court, Judge Shirley will also be able to utilize that uh, part of it. And he won't have a lot. When people get arrested in their released, could possibly be released, that's in our court. It's not district court. Everything starts with us. So if somebody's released, usually on a pre-trial risk assessment case, it's from our court, not the district court. Yes, we understand that. Thank you. Do you have any questions? The, the pay schedule you came up with, Denise, is that, is that uh, contractual, that pay schedule? 
they're already is it in the contract? Yeah, is it in the contract? Um, How did we come up with that schedule? Is what I'm asking. I actually, Liz Barella, HR, helped me get these numbers. We looked at uh, Elko's because Elko just hired bailiffs throughout their county because of these new laws, and so we looked at their fees. And then I went and uh, had a meeting with Liz. And she looked at it and, and looked in her book, because it's not a union position. It's not. Okay. Our Jenna Justice Court is an at will okay. because we're under the court. We don't, our, no, but none of us fall under the union. We follow the union just to keep it pretty fair with the rest of the county. And, um, but we don't fall under the union. We are at will employees. But when it comes to wages, I always go to Liz and say, look, where should I be? So that's standard pay for a bailiff that you found, Liz? Yes, okay. for the new bailiffs that they've been doing around and okay. hiring for all this. For this, okay. yeah, because everybody's scrambling and in, in doing it. Elko County just hired bailiffs for all of theirs. Well, as you can see in my paperwork, there's only three of us in the state that don't have security. I'm the first one. Um, the other one is purging, and they're saying there's just not money. I don't know what they're going to be able to do. And Hawthorne, which is Mineral County, is the same thing. And we're the three that do not have security. And I did call the Supreme Court, and, and they know. I've been dealing with the Supreme Court for 25 years. They've always been amazed that we do not have security in this courthouse. And it's not just about us. It's about everybody. You know, courthouses have security for a reason. Didn't we, with the court trials and stuff that we've had in the past, didn't we have a, a deputy? We've only there? had a deputy in there if they are in custody. And the sheriff's oh. office has always been very good to me. Um, we just had a sentencing hearing or a trial, something last week, was with a defendant that we have had problems with in the courtroom. And my clerk actually called me at home the night before and said, look, we've got so-and-so tomorrow can I call the jail and get some bailiffs over here? And we did, we called the jail and Ron and Robert, I had not only one, but I had two bailiffs in court because we did not feel safe. And that's happened a couple times. And um, I've always thought that the court should have a bailiff. Um, Max, he was an ex-cop. He didn't feel that he needed a bailiff. I feel that we need a bailiff. I've always felt that we need a bailiff. And not just for our security, but there's a lot of people in the courtroom. I think everybody should be secure when they're in court. You just, you don't want to wait for something to happen and then say, huh, guess they should have had some security in there. And again, not just for us. You know, I was trying to justify a full-time position because I'm not in court all day, right. every day. Um, so that's why we put the pre-trial risk assessment in there also can help with that. But if they're not in court and being utilized by the Argena Justice Court for either pre-risk or in court, they will be patrolling the courthouse or we can put them in a chair out in the foyer and just have an officer's presence there. Which if somebody is thinking about coming in here and raising heck with the treasurer or the clerk or whoever, at least there's a known presence in here. When NHP moved into the courthouse, I was thrilled. I'm like, thank God I've got cops down the hall for me that have guns, yay. But they're out doing their job. They're not in here very often. And besides, what am I gonna do, you know? Hey. <laughs> no, we understand. Did you have any comments at all, Counselor? No, this okay. is new and, and she's exactly right. Okay. And I think that it is nice to have security in the building because there I've been, you know, I'm not in here all the time, obviously, and there's been people in here at times that, whether it be down at DMV, that, I mean, they, you know, somebody thinks they're being wronged for something, they go sideways, and it just is a little bit more, um, a better feeling having somebody roam in the halls, you know, and more of a deterrent mm -hmm. from something happening. Right. Keith, did you have any comments on it? No, I think it's a good idea, and I think Denise and I have talk about it and I think it's good it'd be a benefit and like she said when it's when they're not being used upstairs it will be a, a deterrent within the entire courthouse and it's a good idea thank you you ready for a motion
Well, I'll make a motion that we <coughs> fund the bailiff for the Argentina Justice Fund. I'll second. The way it's the way it's presented by Judge Fortune. Thank you, Art. Made the motion. Kathy seconded that. that. Um, I think it's long overdue. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, thank you. We move thank on you. to number eight. I'm sorry, while we're on that, I just want to state on the record in front of the commissioners that I had a lot of help putting this together, and so I wanted to publicly thank um, Liz Barella in HR, Cindy Benson in finance, and Ron and um, Robert from the sheriff's office. They, they were a great help to me, so I just want to publicly say thank you to them. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Number eight, Argenta Justice Court for possible action to create a fund of budget line item for the bailiff position backup when they are uh, out of the area on vacation or ill or something. We need someone to step in, so uh, we need to look at that. Okay, in that instance, um, right now I'm worrying about now that you've oh, you know approved to fund it for me, I need to find a bailiff. Um, that may not be easy. It, may be hard, I don't know yet. Um, but we need somebody, you can't just have one person. People are going to get sick, people are gonna have family emergencies, people are gonna go on vacation. Um, I have talked to Ron and Robert about this and at the drop of a hat, usually if somebody gets ill and they call in that day, you know, you can't plan for that. I need an officer today at 10 o'clock. Um, the Sheriff's Office will cover me as much as they can, but when they cannot, I would like to, after I find a bailiff, go back out. I just don't want to have to come before you again and ask later. Um, after I find a bailiff, if I find a bailiff, I'd like to go back out and try to find a relief bailiff, not necessarily falling under the same criteria, has to be a Cat 1 or a Cat 2. I may be able to just get away with a Cat, uh, cat 3, just to have another presence in there for while that bailiff is unavailable. Um, it's not a salary position, it's nothing, it'll just be like a, kind of like a contracted position um, to where if at the last minute I call somebody and say, you know, John Smith, my bailiff called in, can you come in and do court for an hour? That they could come in, just cover court. They won't do the courthouse. They won't do the pre-risk assessment. They won't do any of that. They will just physically be in the courtroom while we're having court. So we're not talking a lot of time, but I would just like to have some money. I'd like to create a new line in my budget and just throw some money in there um, just in case to where I can pay them. And it'll just be hourly, you know, like 30 bucks an hour for a couple hours every now and then. I just need to have some kind of backup. And I have to have two in the jury trials, when I have a jury trial. Jury trials um, are going to be, I hope and pray, few and far between. My bailiff will always be in there, but during a jury trial, I need two. I will utilize the sheriff's office when I can. If I cannot, then I may also need to use the relief bailiff for that. Now, is that someone that you can contract? That's My only concern about that is the training. If you have a person that doesn't have any training, that you call in for a bailiff and something goes sideways, they don't know what they're supposed to do. They'll be trained. It, it'll, I mean, they'll, oh, do you mean like by the court of yeah, what like, to do well, or as an officer? Well, yeah, as if it's, um, if it's, is it somebody you're going to use from maybe overtime from the sheriff's office that's not working? Because if at a drop of a hat, you know, for a year and a half you don't need somebody, and then a drop of a hat you call someone that, you know, who is it, who's not going to be employed that's going to be a readily available to a drop of a hat for you? That's my that's, only concern. Yeah, that's my, that's, I'm, that's I'm hoping <laughs> that it'll be somebody, I've had a few people approach me that are about to retire from the Lander County Sheriff's Office. That's what I'm reaching out to, is it will be somebody that is an officer that has already been in our court for years and already knows that. I may not get that, I just know I have had a couple of people reach out to me and say, hey, I can be your relief. They are already 
trained and familiar with the court, what to do, and the court procedures. If I don't get anybody like that, yeah, I'm going to have to start all over again and try to figure it out. The reason why I'm hoping to get somebody who has law enforcement training and who has been in our courtrooms before and understands everything is so that um, when I do call them, they're ready to go. You know, they're already post-certified. They're already familiar with the court procedures. And like I said, they're not going to do the rest of it. It's just at the drop of a hat, basically, when I don't have a bailiff. So how much money do you want in that line item? Um, I was trying to figure it out, and because it's six months or seven months, I don't know how quickly, if I'm going to be able to even... If there's anything left, then you just roll it over. Yes, yes, yeah. and then I would just roll just it over be, to the yeah. to the next year. I was thinking possibly $1,000 should be more than enough. Oh, I don't think that would be enough. I, I think it would at least for the next few months. I think it will for the next few months. After that, probably not. But I think for the next few months it's going to be because, and here's the reason, if I hire a bailiff, this is a new position. It's an Argena Justice Court position. They're on probation like every other Argena Justice Court employee. They're not getting time off for six months unless it's an emergency. Yeah. Yeah. So I that's why I budgeted that so well. You're sure. It's because for six months, I don't, I'm hoping the sheriff's office and with my bailiff not being able to go off to Aruba for two weeks, for six months, um, I'm but not going to have them. If you bring somebody from the SO, then you're going to have to pay them out of your fund, right? No, no. If they're, Ron and Robert, they're on duty at the Lander County Sheriff's Office. If I need somebody and mm -hmm. they can give me somebody, they're going to they're gonna give okay. me that person. I don't have to pay them. And is that going to be our first... Okay. That is going to, yes, okay. that will always be so our first. So we would default to automatically call this person, we're always going to call the sheriff's office? We're always going to call the sheriff's okay. office first, yes. Right. I will always, and like I said, Ron and Robert have been very good to me and have always been very good okay. to Justice Court. Well, I'll make a motion that we put $1,000 in the uh, bail backup position at uh, Judge Fortune's request. I think we should put more, but we'll honor her request. I'll second it. Uh, I have a question on the way the motion is um, brought forward because it really isn't clarified that it's a new bailiff position back up. We need to create so maybe if we could just rephrase that a little bit to have maybe <coughs> not just the amount but the bailiff position uh, okay. back up is approved. Yeah, okay, then we'll, my motion will be modified to approve the uh, funding for the newly created uh, bailiff backup position for Judge. Denise Fortune at $1,000 per her request. Second. Thank you. I read the motion. Brian seconded that. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And one more, number nine for Argenta. Argenta does support the possible action to refuse the use of a vacant office on the second floor of the administration's courthouse building to be designated and utilized as the new bailiff office. And we tried to keep that as general as we could because we weren't real sure. So um, it'll just work with uh, our executive director and give him some office space of what will work out. We need a motion for that. Yes. Well, it's, it's the media room is what I'm requesting. I'm requesting the media room upstairs. It's two doors down from the Argenta Justice Court. Okay, for right now, we're going to do the... <laughs> the motion for a vacant office and oh, you can gotcha. work with okay. Keith on the media room because I mean what if that changes at some point we'd have to come back and change our motion yeah. and up. well so, I went to him first no I understand oh, okay. that I understand that that's fine but we want to leave it general here and let you two work it out okay okay I make a motion to approve um, the use of a vacant office on the second floor or within the building for our uh, to be utilized as a new bailiff office Thank you, Kathy. Uh, she made the motion, and Brian seconded that. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a quick ten-minute break. Okay. Thank you. We're almost done. This is fine. And we are starting with number 10.
under the county manager for <coughs> possible action to modify the Nevada Energy Franchise Agreement to exclude the town of Kingston from the new agreement and approve the option they request. Uh, background on this for us is that um, when we uh, took option one, which was um, not to charge our Nevada Energy customers the 2% that they had and are being charged, um, we knew that the school district was separate and that was so noted in our franchise agreement. What we did not realize was that the town of Kingston being separate, we have collected for them and we have always sent that money directly to them as part of their budget. So when I attended one of their meetings and said, hey, this was our decision and, and all you folks are going to have 2% savings on your Nevada energy coming up and they and Shannon <laughs> said to me oh my goodness that's part of our budget and I thought we never ever considered that so I I called Nevada energy I spoke with uh, Linda Bissett the government um, liaison that was here before us and said is this possible to pull out and how do we do that and what can we do she said absolutely it's no trouble at all um, you just have to come through the commissioners. We have to make that decision, of course. So um, because of the time frame, um, the Kingston Board had a special meeting uh, to see what they would like to do. If, uh, and that they had the three options. They could go along with us and say no more. However, it turns out that um, the exact amount of money was like $2,664 that they collected in 2018 which is 8% of their budget. Their budget's wow. about $35,000. Yeah, and to lose that every year was kind of scary for them. So they voted uh, for option three, which is to remain at the 2%, not to increase it. That was the other option. But just to leave it the way it was, and so their folks wouldn't get any notice if we approve that to exclude them from our franchise agreement. And this goes back to the one that we had before us on September 19th for the records I'll make a motion to modify that energy franchise agreement and exclude the town of Kingston. And approve the option? And approve the option okay. that they requested. I'll second. Thank you. I, I know they'll be <laughs> tickled about that. Judy made the motion. Can I be seconded? Any other discussion? Would we clarify that for everybody? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. We are in number 11, correspondence reports, potential upcoming agenda items. I know um, NACO has um, asked to be on our agenda. They do a, a, a yearly Try every other year, the year that the, that the <coughs> legislature is a meeting, <laughs> um, they, they try and get out after that finishes to uh, to just kind of stop and visit with us and give us some information of what's going on and bring us up to date. So I know that's one that will be on. Yep, that's correct. Um, we have asked uh, for the evaluation for our executive director <coughs> to be on. Be that will be next time. And he has been served. He has been served. Yes. Thank you. And that, that's a go. We have two ordinance hearings or public <coughs> meetings that will be on there. Yeah. Presentations of the ordinance. Yeah. No, yeah. The yeah, public, the public, public hearings. Public hearings for, for the, uh, for the, uh, I'd be the building codes. And the public hearing for the, uh, uh town of, or the, uh, water the and sewer the too. And the business, uh, right. Mm -hmm. Impacts. Impacts. <coughs> business <coughs> impacts. Yeah. Business impacts. Business impacts. Yeah. Speaking of ordinances, is, we never completed the ordinance for the dog park. We, it's never been finished. We don't have a dog park legally. Well, no one has an ordinance to cover dog parks in the state. That, and we started the process. No, no, we, but there's no ordinance that covers dog parks anywhere in the state. So, but we still have to change the ordinance about dogs at large. 
can, run, more can run in a designated code? area. No, you don't. You Is don't that need what to change saying? anything with the dog ordinance <laughs> because we have a dog park. <clears throat> dog at large usually falls under unleashed dogs that are running down the street, not in a contained area. Yeah, but that's not a dog park ordinance. We can change that. Commissioner. Well, but, but you I mean, this is a process we started in, in you were going to write an ordinance. And I, I, talked, I talked to Patsy about this and said, no one, I, I can't find an ordinance in the state of Nevada that on dog parts only. Okay. And there just isn't one. So, but if, if you want to go into dogs at large and stuff, well, we, we can change that ordinance. And that, that's just it is, is. So if we modify that, where, uh, where we acknowledge that we do have dog park and that citations will now be given for dogs running at large in the dog park. But they're the not at large. Area, they're something. not at large. They're contained within a fence. I think you're talking about a leash law. Yeah, right. Well, right. Joe. So the, Joe, Joe's in charge of the... That's why we don't have a dog park ordinance because they just don't exist. In charge yeah. of the, the count. You're still I in charge of the count. Go off. Yeah. Yeah. Sergeant Jones, Sheriff's sure, Office. Okay. Give us a little clarification on the leash law and dog at large, because I don't see that if a dog is in the dog park that that's. But that's if if it's in the park, that's fine. But it does, and the statute says contained with its own residents. Yeah, if it's not contained, then it's at large. That's correct. Right. But if the park is not its own residence, so you might want to change that leash law. The, the leash law. And, and maybe that's it. it okay. it's, but but like I said, it, it was this was one of the things that kind of got started, and then you well, know, we wasn't discuss, we discussed having an ordinance for the dog park, but they, those don't exist. Right, and I, I, I understand what you're saying. Counselor. So I just I mean, right. you give me direction, I'll do it. No, it, as I understand what you're saying, and I didn't know why it didn't proceed. But I knew that, that there needed to be something because otherwise, why would we section off a piece of the park if you can just let your dogs run anyway? So we need to change the law or, no, uh, okay. to, I'll look to into allow that. that. Part of it. I'll look into our county codes and see what needs to be changed. Up. I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. not that big a deal, but yet if you want to follow the, the rules, you need to, you know, cross your teeth and dot your eyes and make things... Legit. And that's just why I brought it up. Okay. Is it needs to be cleaned up. Okay. Okay. Anything else on the upcoming agenda? Back to the evaluation of our executive director, our yes. county manager. Are we just doing it as a open like discussion or are we gonna have some formal? Oh, there's a form and Okay, there are so that yeah. will be in our packet. It has yeah. been okay. No, uh, what we sent to you in advance. I'll send okay. the form. Pardon? I'll send the form. Okay, thank you. That was Liz Barella, our HR, and she will send thank us. You, she will send us the information out ahead of time, and then um, we do that in an open meeting. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah, we have to. Mm -hmm. um, okay, anything else on the? We're still advertising for Sulak. Well, I'll, if it hasn't been filled, it's being advertised regularly, yeah. as, as well as Lita's being advertised. Yeah, we'll and need I one more. Austin Airport has an opening that we're advertising for. Okay. Okay, if there's nothing else, I'll move into public comment. For non-agendized -agenda, items only, persons are invited to submit comments in writing and or attend and make comments on any non-agenda item at the board, if any, and discussion of those comments at the discretion of the board. All public comment may be limited to three minutes per person, again, at the discretion of the board. Reasonable restrictions may be placed on public comments based upon time, place, and manner, but public comment based upon viewpoint may not be restricted. Any public comment? Make a motion to adjourn. Second. It's been moved and seconded. We adjourn and don't forget to stay Very after for a litigation meeting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ted. Bye, Austin. Thank you, Michelle. I second it. You second it. I think. I think. No, oh, I second it. Did you second it? No, she can't. Don't do that. Confuse me, man. No fighting. At the very end, it gets so excited for you guys to leave. That was on video. That was on video. Yeah.